Hi, I'm Brandon Kennedy, the Chief Product Officer at Losant. Once you're getting data from your devices, the next thing you want to do is look at it. With Losant, you can create beautiful dashboards and publish them directly to your end users. And it's all done with an easy to use and drag and drop interface. So let's dive into the platform and take a closer look at Losant's data visualization. What I've got here is a Losant dashboard showing some of the information from our own smart office application. Our dashboards provide a lot of built-in visuals to display information in a lot of different ways. Starting at the top, you can see some of our location maps. We've got GPS location on the left and indoor positioning on the right. The right map shows some of the location of our sensors throughout our office. If we keep going down, we have our input controls that allow us to control our office music through Sonos. Uh, we're also tracking activity at the front door. And since I am recording audio right now, I did turn on the quiet time light to let everyone else in the office know uh, they should try to be a little bit quiet. We also have some office fans. Since we're running the air conditioning right now, all the fans are off, but if it was a nice day and we had the windows open, people in the office could come in here and turn those fans on if they chose. Uh, we're also tracking the office environment, temperature and humidity over time. If we keep scrolling down, we'll see a list of all of the devices in this office and their connection status. Uh, we're also tracking the outside weather. And uh, finally, at the bottom here, we've got Betty the Orchid, which is one of our office plants. We're tracking the moisture level in order to make sure we know when to water. So just as a reminder, Betty the Orchid is a device in Losant that is constantly reporting its moisture level. Anything reported to Losant as an attribute like this is automatically stored so we can use it in other ways. In this example, visualizing it on a dashboard. So this time series graph is showing the value of that sensor over the last 14 days. I've also added some gauge indicators so we can see the current value, the maximum value, and the minimum value over that same duration. So it looks like the moisture level of Betty fluctuates somewhere between 285 and maybe 575. Since time series graphs are one of the most common types of blocks that are added to dashboards, I'll dive into that and show you the configuration. All dashboard blocks start with a name and an optional description. And as we configure it, we'll see a real-time preview of our block on the top right. The next thing to set up is whether or not this will be a live stream or will show historical information. And since I want to see 14 days of moisture information, this will be an historical time series block. I've then set the duration to 14 days and I've set the resolution to 60 minutes. The next thing to configure are the actual segments I want to display on this time series graph. In this example, I've only got one, so I chose Betty the Orchid as the device. I chose that moisture attribute we saw earlier, and also I need to set an aggregation. The aggregation is closely related to that resolution we saw earlier. Since Betty is reporting information every minute, but our graph's resolution is 60 minutes, we need to be able to aggregate 60 data points together in some way. Losan supports a bunch of different aggregations, but in this example, since I mostly care about the minimum moisture level of the plant, I've chose the minimum for the aggregation. There's a few other options we can do. We can change the display type. Currently, it's set to a filled graph, but if we want to do a line, we can change that. Uh, we can change the line weight, and then we've got some optional information on how to display and format the y-axis. So let's return to the dashboard and then look at one of those gauge indicators that's showing the current minimum and maximum moisture level for Betty the Orchid. Let's look at a gauge block and see how they're configured. So just like a time series, we've got a header and a description. We can also choose between a live stream or historical information. And then we can also choose between two display types for a gauge block, either the dial or if we just want to see the number itself. I like the dial for this one because it gives me a visual indicator of how much water my orchid currently has. So similar to the time series graph, we also have to choose which data to display. So again, I've chose Betty the Orchid as a device and chose Moisture as the attribute. We also have some control over the color of the gauge itself. So by default, it'll be green, but we can put some conditions in that will change the color based on its current value. So in this example, I have two colors. One is orange and one is red. So right now, it's orange because the value is less than 340, but still greater than 300. If the value ever gets beneath 300, the gauge indicator will turn red and give me a really good visual indicator that I need to water this plant. 
Once a block has been added to the dashboard, you can very easily resize it and drag and drop it to position it anywhere you want in order to properly lay out the dashboard where it makes the most sense for you. Going into the dashboard settings, let's look at some of the other features. The first is the access control. This is an easy way to control who is able to view this specific dashboard. You can make it entirely public, so anyone that has the URL can immediately access it. If you make it private, that just means only members of your LOSAN organization are able to access this dashboard. You can also password protect it, which means anyone that has the URL can access it, but they'll be prompted for a password in order to view it. Context variables provide a really powerful way to pass information into your dashboard. The most common reason is to pass a device ID. So unlike earlier where we were explicitly choosing Betty the Orchid as the device, I could set a context variable and then pass in the device ID. This lets me create one dashboard that will allow me to view information for thousands or even millions of devices. And lastly, email reports are a way to create a PDF of this dashboard and mail it to any number of recipients on a predefined schedule. This allows you to turn an existing dashboard into a really nice report for any of your internal or external stakeholders. And the best part of all is dashboards are integrated directly into our end user experiences functionality. So all the work you put in here, you'll be able to brand and customize and then ultimately publish into your own end user experience. Well, this covers LoSAN's data visualization component. And as we've seen, this component is tightly integrated with our data and device management component to make it very easy to build these beautiful dashboards on top of your device's already existing data. And combined with the access controls, email reporting, and integration with our end user experiences functionality, it's very easy to publish these dashboards directly to your end users. Well, from here, I'd recommend checking out LoSant University, which provides a much deeper dive into all of the functionality I covered today. You can also check out our documentation. And if you're ready to start evaluating LoSant to see if it's a fit for your organization, you can jump right into the sandbox and begin building.